What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my next gen career mode. This is episode number 111 and we start today's episode off with a game against Nuremberg here uh, away from home in the Bundesliga of course. Now we're entering October and you would have seen as well the start of the season. It's been good. You know we're still unbeaten of course that is our last aim for the series. Have an undefeated season in the league and you know it, it's been good but you know seven wins and, and three draws and so far we are sitting in second place and you know it has been good no doubt about it but you know, of course, not being top is, is always frustrating, you know, even when you're un undefeated, you know, not being top is kind of annoying, but uh, still, it, it's been a good start to the year, and we want to continue it as well, and, and one thing I've noticed as well during this season has been that we've had a really, really tight defence, I mean, we've only conceded three goals in those ten games, and you've got to remember, I'm a terrible defender, you know, so the fact we've only conceded three goals, in my opinion, is pretty goddamn impressive, and of course, we've looked good in the Champions League games as well, so, you know, the, the, the tight defence has been great this year, and you know, I did say in the summer that the reason I signed Flume uh, as central defensive midfielder, the reason I signed Boateng as centre back who now plays right back, is to tighten up that defence. And it looks as though, you know, it looks as though so far, you know, I don't want to knock anything here, but it looks as though that is definitely paying dividends right now because right now it's it's working in our favour and uh, I'm really pleased with that. But uh, still, yeah, we did take on Nuremberg and the first goal was scored here in the 54th minute. I have to say as well, it was one of the scrappiest goals you'll ever see. Boateng fizzes in across the goalkeeper Stefan really doesn't do a good job at all to be honest does he? he completely fumbles the cross and Kevin Volland I lunged in with the circle button there it was actually a stand tackle I was trying to I was tapping it down I was holding it down I was sorry tapping it uh, very vigorously I should say and uh, he stand tackles the ball into the back of the net and at first I actually thought that Stefan kept the ball out Stefan and the man on the line I thought they kept the ball out but as soon as Kevin Volland picked the ball up here and the celebrations were done I uh, went into the uh, to the main menu and clicked on the instant replay because I wanted to see for myself did the ball actually cross the line there but I mean obviously we know it does because you know the game is perfect and it can't be wrong but uh, still I just wanted to make sure for, for definite because at first at first glimpse I thought it was on the line when he kept the ball out but as you can see the ball is way over the line it's it's the right decision by the uh, the linesman and the referee they did well there the virtual linesman and referee but uh, regardless at first thought I thought it was kept out but uh, I, I knew in the back of my mind it definitely went in but I wanted to prove it for sure and and it did. So Volan makes it 1-0. Very scrappy goal, but I'm pleased we got it regardless. And in the 76th minute, another good chance here. Volan goes through. I try and chip it over Stefan. I succeed in doing so, but it clips the roof of the net and goes behind for a goal kick. So still 1-0. And in the 83rd minute, a good chance for Nuremberg to get an equalising goal here. Blint collects the ball and finds Mack down his right-hand side. Cross the ball in, and Rudnevs does score. The uh, the sort of the camera panned to him really quickly, but it was definitely going in. You guys would have seen that. But thankfully for us, the flag is up for offside. It's a really tight call but thankfully the linesman got it right so thankfully the officials did very well in this game didn't they and the game did finish 1-0 so another clean sheet I gotta say right now you know I'm, I'm really pleased at getting the clean sheets you know just as much as the result to be honest because the clean sheets look so good knowing you haven't conceded and um, yeah another 1-0 victory for us here and you get it's not the most pretty of games in fact it was a really scrappy game to be honest but at least we got the win and I'm very very pleased with that but uh, following that we saw that the Costa uh, says he wants to play more because he's getting frustrated which is kind of understandable really but he is a low overall and he should know that but we took on Spain here for a uh, an international friendly with Germany and it just goes to show you just how strong this squad is both for club and country because the whole first 11 were heard of Berlin players and we won it by three goals to nil and badge dude got sent off in the first half so we fresh brain uh, fresh brain fresh Spain by three goals to nil fantastic result and in the game against Belgium I uh, tried to rest as many heard of Berlin players as possible possible though a couple did start such as Young and uh, Robin and I think you shield started yes you did and uh, we drew the game by a goal each so there you go but uh, following that uh, we saw that Ostanali and Mukhtar are coming back from their loans at Aston Villa and 1860 Munich respectively Um, surprising because I thought those were season long loans but obviously not so that's surprising isn't it I thought I put both of those on season long loans instead they were short loans but there you go it's actually kind of annoying because they won't play you know they, they might just about squeeze onto the bench here and there definitely not Mukhtar but Austin Arley might actually 75 overall but I'd rather them stay out on loan so it's, it's a shame that there's no sort of like in football manager some clubs will come and say you know can we extend the loan deal I'd like that to be uh, done on FIFA as well so 
Aston Villa might say, hey, Austin Ali's been really good for us. Can we keep him for another three months? And we'd be like, yeah, sure. But so hopefully next year. You never know. You never know. But uh, regardless, uh, we take on Hoffenheim here for the second and final game of today's episode. They haven't made a bad start either as they currently sit in sixth place. So they've done all right too in the uh, the first few opening games. And we take them on at the Olympia Stadion here. And, um, you know, looking for another three points, which, you know, we should be the favourites to get. But, of course, they haven't had a bad start. And, you know, I, I do sometimes struggle against Hoffenheim as well. We did lose to them last year away from home so they're a decent side they've got some good players and the first chance fell here in the sixth minute we had a free kick Tony Kroos stood over it but what a save this is by Castiles he flies at full, st full stretch to tip it onto the bar what a brilliant save by the Belgian goalkeeper and he keeps it at nil nil and in the 14th minute a great chance for Hoffenheim to make it one nil here El Unice strikes it but it goes just wide of the post and out for a goal kick so still nil nil as things stood a noise clean sheet was still being preserved but a very very big let off there that was a great chance for the away side. And in the 17th minute, Tony Crows collects the ball, gives it to Flume. Flume strikes it and does score as well. So Flume makes it 1-0. And I've said before, you know, I, I signed this guy in the summer primarily to defend, basically, and help us uh, with our defensive duties, which he's done, no doubt about it. But because he's got high, high work rates, he does get himself into good areas. And that's the key. You know, Flume, I don't know what it is exactly. His movement must be really, really good because every single time he gets forward and in, in and around, around the, the edge of the area, the opposition area, he's always in the right places. He really is. Like, that was perfect. He beats the gap in the defence. He has a free shot on goal. He's right in the centre. It's perfect for, for me to play the ball through to him. I, I don't know what it is exactly, but he always moves into the right channel. So, Flume makes it 1-0 here, and we go in front. But, but we'd have to play the rest of the game with 10 men because... I got Marco Roy sent off for one of our first red cards of the series and yeah it was really disappointing as well because no doubt about it he deserved to book him but as you see in the top right there I actually thought that Royce got the ball in the first uh, challenge it's, it's kind of hard to see I'm sorry about that but uh, regardless I actually thought that Royce shouldn't have got a booking in the first phase of play. He did, and that was a booking, and he got two yellows for a red card. But at the end of the day, the, the second challenge was diabolical regardless. He could have got a straight red card for that on, on its own anyway, really. So, I've got no complaints. I mean, I've got no complaints. Yes, on another day, the referee might have been a bit more lenient. However, you know, he's not, and I've got no complaints. It was a definite red card, and Royce is off. So, Royce is sent off. Yeah, I guess his first red card for us and uh, Tony Kroos would actually make it 2-0 uh, 10 minutes later so clearly going down to 10 men wasn't going to be too much of a hindrance for us because Kroos does double the, uh, the score in here and uh, there was a Hoffenheim player actually on the floor during that phase of play and usually the referee will stop but uh, thankfully he didn't because we played on and Kroos scored from it but um, you know, to, to be honest I mean Tony Kroos scores there and despite having 10 men I still felt as though we should be able to get the win because you know again no disrespect to Hoffenheim they made a good start they are decent side some very decent players on this uh, this career mode but regardless we should still be the side in the ascendancy and even with Ro uh, even with Royce now sent off I still fancied our chances but Hoffenheim almost responded directly from kickoff here our unity strikes it but again it's Neuer making the save in the goal and from the corner it's crossed in by Rudy into the centre here the number six floats it in towards Yannick Vestergaard who wins the header but it goes over the bar and out for a corner so another corner for Hoffenheim but it was it did come to nothing it was still 2-0 and just before half time another great chance here Flume dispossesses his man gives it to Sam Sam plays it back to Flume and again I've talked about it before I'll talk about it again he's in the right areas he's going through one on one and Flume finishes it into the near post and makes it 3-0 keeps his call and we are now 3-0 up just before half time even with 10 men so Flu makes it 3-0, and it, it's just brilliant, isn't it? I love this guy. He's so good on defense, and then he runs up the pitch as well, gets into great areas, and he's got a good finish on him as well. So, Herder Berlin 3, Hoffenheim 0, and uh, surely we're on course for the three points here, even with 10 men. And in the 68th minute, another chance here, and Neuer, well, a rare mistake by Manuel Neuer, and it's a real let-off for our goalkeeper there. The cross is played into the center, and he fumbles it. It's Butterfingers in the rain, but thankfully it goes just behind and out for a goal kick. Uh, sorry, for a corner even and from that corner Rudy crosses the ball into the centre he picks out his man who heads it but it's a good save by Neuer and this time we get the ball away safely so still heard of Berlin 3 
Hoffenheim nil. Another chance for Hoffenheim from this corner. It's crossed in again by Rudy towards the centre. Nicholas Sewell wins the header, but it hits the post, and Neuer gets to it. So Hoffenheim had their chances, but they just didn't take them, and we had our chances, and we took them. So, again, that's what football's about. You know, you've got to take your chances in the games. If you don't, you'll get punished. That's what's happening to Hoffenheim in this game. You know, they were playing against the side with 10 men, yet they didn't take their chances. We did, and because of that, we win the game by three goals to nil. Disappointed I couldn't complete Bloom's hat-trick there, but regardless, he won man the match. It was a great performance, and again, it just goes to show, even with 10 men, we still kept a clean sheet as well, and it just goes to show how tight this defence is this year. I'm really pleased the transfers have worked out for us, and the tactic change has done as well. So, as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the episode, then please leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of my next-gen career mode very soon.